So now you know what the Schrodinger equation is, you know what an infinite potential well is, and you know what energies electrons can have when they're trapped in an infinite potential well. So what we're going to do now is look at the form of the wave function for an electron in an infinite potential well. So like we did last time, what I'm going to do is present the solution to you and then we're going to show that this satisfies all the requirements that we've set up so far. So the wave function of an electron trapped in an infinite potential well is given by psi n of x is equal to a sine n pi on l x. And this is for x between 0 and l, i.e. that's when the electron's inside the well. Outside the well, the wave function is just equal to 0. Okay, so let's work through this now. And then as we're working through it, we'll actually be able to be a bit more specific about what that a is in the expression as well. But yeah, we'll work through it step by step. Okay, so we're going to start by showing that it satisfies the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so the Schrodinger equation is given by d squared psi dx squared plus 8 pi squared m on h squared outside of e minus ux psi equals zero. And we're considering our infinite potential well. We said out here u was infinite, u is infinite, psi is zero, psi is zero. Inside the well u equals zero and we're showing that psi is equal to a sine n pi on lx is a solution. And we also know that inside the well, our allowed energies, En, are equal to h squared over 8ml squared times n squared. Okay, so what we want to do is show that we can substitute these in here. And so we'll need to take the second derivative of our wave function. So d psi dx is equal to the derivative of this. When we take the derivative of sine, we get cos, and we've got this n pi on L in front of the x. So we end up with A times n pi on L cos n pi on L x. Now we need to take the derivative again. So we've got d squared psi dx squared, and that is equal to A. And once again, we get this factor out the front, n squared pi squared on L squared. When we differentiate cos, we get minus sine times n pi on L x. And now what we can do is we've got the second derivative, so now we can substitute everything in here. So we've got our left-hand side of this equation is equal to minus a times n squared pi. Sorry, that's a pi squared. pi squared on L squared times sine of n pi on L x. Okay, now we've got this plus 8 pi squared m on h squared. Now e, we know what e is inside the well, it's equal to this. So h squared over 8 m L squared n squared, u inside the well we said was 0, times psi, which is a sine n pi on l x. Okay, so this 8 will cancel this 8. We've got an m here and an m here, an h squared here and an h squared here. So we've got minus a n squared pi squared on l squared sine of n pi on l x. And then we've got a plus and here's an a and then here's an n squared. Then we've still got our pi squared left. And on the bottom we've got the L squared. And then this is times sine n pi on L x. So you can see these two terms are equal and opposite, so this equals zero. So we've just shown 
that our proposed wave function does satisfy Schrodinger's equation. Now, the other requirement we had of our wave function was we said that the particle had to be confined within the box. It's an infinite well. So we have to have the wave function being zero at the edges because there's absolutely zero possibility of it being outside that well. So the wave function has to be completely inside. So we need psi equals zero at x equals zero and x equals l. So we should just check that our function for psi satisfies that as well. So we've got um, a sine, we'll start with x equals zero, n pi on l times zero, which is equal to a sine of zero, which is zero, so that's good. And then we've got a sine m pi on l times l, so this is a sine times n pi. So we've got an integer multiple of pi, and that is always equal to zero as well. So we do also satisfy the boundary conditions that we've set ourselves. OK, so I've just cleaned the screen. What we can do now is use probability to find a. So what we've just shown is that the wave function a sine n pi over l x describes the electron which is confined to the infinite potential well. So it's confined to here between 0 and l. Now we know that the probability of finding an electron in or any particle in a specific volume is given by psi star psi. Now in this case, if we want to take the complex conjugate of a real number, it's just the real number again, because there's no, if we have a plus ib, there is no plus ib term, b is zero. And so the complex conjugate of this is equal to a minus ib, which would just be a minus zero. So this is equal to a squared sine squared n pi on L x. Okay, so to find out the probability of the electron being between 0 and L, what we do is we integrate this from 0 to L and the probability of it being in a little place dx we multiply by dx there. So doing this integral gives us the probability of the, part, the electron being between 0 and L. But we actually know what that probability is because we know that the particle is between 0 and L. It's not outside the well because it's an infinite well. There's absolutely no way it can be outside. So the probability that it's inside the well is 1. Okay, so what we can do is do this integral and that will allow us to find A. So to do the integral, let's pull a squared out the front. We're going from 0 to L of sine squared n pi on L x dx. And now this is a standard integral. We know that the integral of sine ax dx is equal to x on 2 minus sine of 2ax on 4a. So we're just using this standard integral, but instead of little a, we've got n pi on l. Okay, so this is equal to a squared times x on 2 minus sine of 2 times n pi on l times x over 4 times n pi on l and we evaluate this integral from 0 to L. So this is equal to a squared L on 2 minus sine of 2n pi on L, and now x is L, so that cancels, and this is over 4n pi on L, and now we substitute in 0 and subtract it, so this is minus 0 on 2, plus sine, 
when we put the zero in here this will be sine of zero over 4 and pi on L. Okay so now sine of zero is equal to zero so this whole term here is equal to zero. Here this term we've got sine of 2 pi n and n is any integer. Sine of 2 pi times an integer is always equal to 0. And so this thing here is also always 0. And so we have a squared L on 2 is what this entire integral is. And we know that that's equal to 1 because that's the probability of finding the electron in the well. And so rearranging this, we've got a squared is equal to 2 on L. And that tells us that a is equal to the square root of 2 on L. So we now have our wave function either more specifically without the a is equal to the square root of 2L times sine of n pi on L x. Okay, so just to clarify what we did, the probability of finding a particle in at x within a small width dx is given by the wave function, the modulus of it squared times dx. Now, what we actually performed when we said, well, the electrons definitely within that well, so the probability of it between being between zero and L was one, was actually known as normalization. So normalization just tells us that if we integrate um, this probability over all space, so if x can go from minus infinity up to infinity, then the wave function as a function of x squared dx has got to be 1 because the particle has to be somewhere. So the probability across all space gives us one. In the case we just looked at, we could confine these limits more because we knew that it had to be within the well. But this is the more generalized form of normalization.